This is Launching Your Daughter Podcast, and I'm your host, Nicole Burgess, Licensed Marriage and Family Therapist. The information shared in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. Now, here is today's episode. Episode 48. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm so excited about this episode because it's actually number 48. And today I'm going to talk all about expectations. And this was one of these expectations I had hoped I would make it this far in this podcasting journey, and I am actually there. So I, when I looked up the definition of expectations, it said, you know, there's a high probability of a certain event happening. And I have this conversation, I think, on a daily basis with families over the years regarding what they expect from their children, what they expect from their daughters. And I want to help kind of bring a little bit of clarity to this. So one of those things regarding managing expectations is whether it's with your daughter, if it's with your friend, if it's with your partner, your spouse, or a family member, is when you make a request, expecting them to be immediately responsive to it or be immediately agreeable to it. That's not necessarily the case. What I mean by that is if you make a request, let's say, for example, you've asked your daughter to go go to the kitchen and clean up the dishes after dinner, and, and she says, okay, great, she just answered you right away. Now, she may or may not actually go do that immediately. So when you make a request to somebody, a lot of times we have this expectation, oh, they're going to do exactly what it is that I ask when I ask it, and there will be no arguments and all of that. And that's not necessarily the case. Have to really remember the person you are asking is also a separate human being from you. So they may or may not do what it is you've asked, even if it's a fair request. They may not do it in the same time frame as you. They may not do it the same way as you. And they may actually not even agree with you. So part of managing expectations is literally letting go of the results of the request. One example that I truly have conversations with at least once a week, if not every single day when I'm working with families, it's really about chores, right? So parents will say, hey, I've asked my daughter to, you know, clean up her room or do the dishes. And as I explore that with them, I often ask, so did you give her a timeline of when you wanted that done? Or was that more of you had asked and she was in the middle of something and so then you got more frustrated because she didn't just jump up and do it. More often than not, that's the case. And the reason why I say this is because us adults, remember, we've got the full brain. We may be thinking like, oh yeah, we got to get the dishes done. The trash needs to get taken out. We've got 50 other things that are going on. So I've just got to ask for some help to do this really quick. And if your daughter or your kids are busy doing some other task, whether it be homework, they're playing a video game, they're chatting with a friend on the phone, they're not in the same space as you are when you made that request. So oftentimes I I hear this conflict that will happen between the parent and their daughter, and it's more about just managing that. So I encourage parents, if you want your, your daughter to do a certain chore, Give her a time frame of when it needs to be done or completed. So for example, let's say you want her to do the dishes after dinner. So it's like, hey, before you know you go to bed tonight at eight o'clock, nine o'clock, I would like those dishes to be completed or done so that you know everything is cleaned up before we all go to bed. That way, let's say you ate dinner at five, and I know that's not everybody's gonna eat dinner at five o'clock, just an example. <laughs> But let's say that's what it is. That gives her at least a three-hour window. So if she goes and does homework for a little bit or does something else, she can come back and get that done. Another thing I will tell parents is maybe make a chore chart. And I know there's there's different frames of thoughts regarding chore charts. But remember, when she's in middle school or she's in high school, one, she's got more requirements from school. And two, with that frontal lobe still being developed, she's not going to remember things as easily. And I know for many of my my adults that I work with that sometimes they also forget things when they have a lot on their mind and they forget that. The more we're stressed, the more our memory is impacted. So make it easy on yourself, parents, and make it easier on your daughter. Just have a chore list up there saying, hey, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, that means trash is taken out. 
or the dishwasher gets emptied or whatever that may be in your home. But that also helps kind of manage those expectations. I had a couple of my listeners actually write in and they were asking about trying to manage those expectations when their daughters return home from college and they come home and they don't do anything. They don't help out with the chores anymore. They don't do laundry. And I'm like, well, you know, it's reminding them that when they come home for that school break, the family stuff hasn't stopped. Just because she's no longer in the day-to-day, there are still things that are going on when she's not there. So it's reminding her prior to her coming home from that break. So for example, let's say it's the spring break holidays coming up and she's going to come home saying, hey, honey, you know, just remember when you come home, we've got these activities going on and we're going to need some help about doing laundry or helping out with dinner things like that. So everybody's on the same page. And if she's already made other plans, she can let you know that as well. So there's a lot less chance of conflict that's going to happen. Another thing I invite parents to really consider is when there's frustration or irritation that comes up when an expectation isn't met, really pausing and looking what was underneath that request that you made. Sometimes, again, if there's old wounds from your own childhood or how your parents had raised you, those things could be triggered if your daughter is doing things a little differently or not responding in the way that you are wanting them to. So it's really looking at yourself first and saying, okay, is it coming from a place of fear? Is it coming from a place where I'm thinking I'm not enough? Is it coming from a place maybe of feeling abandoned? That way you can manage your own emotions that are coming up where you can still respond to the issue or the situation versus reacting out of emotion. I know that's a big thing for many people. It's being able to feel like they have a little more control over their emotions versus their emotions have control over them. So I'd invite you, if you haven't listened to episode 23, I talk about the different communication styles. And assertive communication is the one in there. I break that down of what that looks like. It's I feel blank naming your emotion when you, you name the behavior. And what I need from you is X. Again, what is it that you're needing from them? What type of behavior, what type of response are you looking for them? But no matter what, this age group, it's really, really, truly remembering One, since they've been age two, basically, you don't have any control over them because they are a separate human being than you. Two, they're also going for their own autonomy. So it's, you may have some power struggles in there if you're not aware of, okay, where is this coming from? And they are separate from you. So it's not that they're defying you necessarily. Sometimes they they can defy on purpose, but sometimes it's, you know, saying, hey, I know how to manage my own time. Hey, I know how to do these sort of tasks. You don't need to tell me unless they're asking for that feedback. The other thing I would encourage is what I talked about in episode two, which is having a family meeting. So again, if your daughter is getting ready to head off to school or, you know, go away for a little bit, maybe she's going to do an exchange program or something like that. Talk about the expectations of what it is when she leaves or when she comes back that you have as a family. That way things go a little bit smoother. Another thing about managing those expectations is staying curious yourself as the parent about where maybe your daughter's frustration is coming from. If she's like, oh, this is so unfair. I don't know why I have to keep doing this. That again is about slowing that conversation down and trying to really step into her shoes and finding out what is frustrating her so much. I hope this makes it make sense regarding managing those expectations, both as they as a parent and trying to understand where your daughter is coming from. So much of it about about this is really just slowing things down and getting out of the heat of the moment. If you're in a power struggle together, if somebody's in, in disagreement and then anger starts to rise up, just pause, take a break. Just everybody just go take a time out in about 10 to 20 minutes and then check back in with one another to see if you can continue that dialogue. There is the struggle with having this expectation because I made that request, this other person is going to do or say exactly what it is I think they're going to say. And that's where the requester really needs to work on letting go of that expectation, letting go of what that result's going to be. Because the reality is we don't have any control over 
what that response is going to be from the other person. We actually don't have any control over any of the events, right? We can make all kinds of plans in our life, but it's really letting go of how it's going to unfold or letting go of the outcome of it. That's really where, you know, our our struggle or our pain comes from is when we hold on to what we think is going to happen and say that's the truth versus No, that's in the future. And again, we don't have control over that. So example, you know, if mom tells daughter, I want you to have the dishes done tonight by eight o'clock before you go to bed. And the, and she imagines the daughter just springing up off of the couch and, you know, skipping into the kitchen and being able to do it saying, great mom, thank you so much for teaching me these life skills of learning how to take care of a home. And then that doesn't happen. It's more of the eye roll happens and she, you know, maybe she kind of shuffles into the kitchen and mumbles under her breath. It's like, oh, whatever, right? That can happen as well, but it's letting go of the expectation. They're going to be so excited about it. It's really remembering as the parent, you really are teaching them those life skills that they need and they're they're getting it. They truly are. The girls that I work with for over the past decade or more, you guys are planting the seeds. And so even though they may go, oh, I think it's so stupid that I have to, to do all these chores or that mom or dad want me to pick up my clothes or do this and that, you really are teaching them the skills of being able to maintain a home, they learning how to cook, learning how to manage money, learning how to manage time, and learning how to truly set boundaries with themselves and with others. And when I say with themselves, you're role modeling how to do self-care as well. So again, parents, I can't stress enough for you to be able to take some time out yourself, for you to be able to have downtime or have couples night or go out with your friends ever so often and, you know, let the kids be there at home again, as long as it's age appropriate, and they can stay home. It is showing them that yes, you're a parent and you're also, you know, a human being, you're also an adult who needs to have some time away. That really role models to your daughters going forward in their life, what they can do. So again, going back to managing expectations, it's what are you role modeling to them? What do you want them to learn? And if something is really a strong emotion is coming up for you, explore that. You stay curious with that to maybe look at, oh, that's a button that can be pushed. But the more you explore it and the more you heal that, then it no longer becomes this fight within you or a fight between your daughter and that she's got to do just what you you want her to do, how you want her to do it. And it's more of, okay, she is who she is. We can still have the structure around this. And there's consequences, again, if she doesn't follow through with maybe the chores or things that you guys have for your family. More than anything, though, it's giving yourself permission to let go of the expectation that person is going to respond or do what it is you think they're going to do the way you think they're going to do it. So I hope you found this this helpful. I know it's a little shorter today, but I was trying to go back and look at some of the information that some of my listeners have given me, and I'm trying to, to make some more podcasts around those concerns or what you all are wanting to hear more. So feel free to, to write to me at Nicole at launchingyourdaughter.com or go out there to launchingyourdaughter.com and you can sign up for the newsletter. Again, I'm working on some articles and things to to share in those newsletters and maybe do some free webinars coming up this spring or summer. So I look forward to hearing from you and take care. Thank you for listening to Launching Your Daughter with Nicole Burgess, Licensed Marriage and Family Therapist. For more information or to stay up to date, go to launchingyourdaughter.com. You can sign up for my email list or join my Facebook group. Thank you.